Um, now, you mentioned a lot about the water problem. Now, have you seen a drop in agricultural produce because of the drought? And has this resulted in a significant loss in terms of money um, to the department? And on top of that, what about dams and to have those dams functioning? Yes, yes. Um, how, how do we deal with, with, the, with the water situation? So let, let's start first by looking at the production. Has, it, how, how, has the production been affected? And then part two, um, what are we doing? On average, each year, we are able to produce about 1,100 metric tons of food. That, that is what we do most years. Um, in crops and in livestock, about 150 metric tons of dress meat. Um, you know, once you get there, you consider that a good year. And yes, I would want to report to you that this year, in, in, when I say this year, I mean in 2015, the, the last reporting period, we did fall short um, by some 400 metric tons. And that certainly did not surprise me because, um, you know, the wet season was very dry. And the period when people normally do most of the, the, the farming, they were unable. If you planted, it didn't come because we're all so heavily dependent on the natural precipitation. I would admit to you that um, all of the, the, the impacts were not costed, but um, it's reasonable to, to, to know or to assume that, I mean, there were, financial, there, there were financial constraints. Because people, they bought seeds, people went, some people cultivated the same plot of land several times, because you cultivated it expecting the normal rains, because, you know, uh, again, you know, farmers, they have their own sense of the, the, the weather, whether it's whether they believe in the McDonald's or, or whatever. They have the history of over the years. It rains in May. It rains in October. You know, so you, you prepare and the rains didn't come. And uh, even what you had in the ground could not have produced at the normal level. So all of those are losses. And um, as I said, it showed in the, in the total national output where it was significantly reduced, and um, in other ways as well, you know? Now, what can we do to help that situation? Now, first of all, we have to come to, to the realization that the predictions are that we might be going into a new norm, mm -hmm. meaning that don't expect a lot of rain annual precipitation going forward, that for a period, it is going to be drier. In fact, some, some figures were, were given, and it has been shown that over the last three to four years, the, the, the rainfall has been falling by way over 30-40% each year. And um, while it may not continue to drop, it is still going to be below what has been the annual average over the last, say, 50-100 years. So, Big issues, and you know, our soil do not store water um, on the surface. We, we don't have any dams, we don't have any large rivers, and that kind of thing, which would have been a nice alternative source. You could just pump the water mm. from there or channel it back to your farm. So what can we do? Well, first of all, through the agricultural resource management, which is um, managed not directly by the department, but by another agricultural entity, I think that is headed by Mr. Kelly, the gentleman who formerly was in charge of SSMC. Um, several dams have been built around the island. Um, although we don't naturally store water, we had to bring in a liner, an impervious liner, and on average, we were able to build dams which would store like one million gallons of water. So in some places, we have storage. Um, there are some old reservoirs that I think could be repaired. It's much cheaper than starting a new one from scratch. There's some in Foyes, for example. So there's some elsewhere, many estates have. If those can be retrofitted, if those can be repaired, um, they too could store water when it rains. Um, other things that we're encouraging people is to 
cover the soil, especially plastic mulch. Organic mulch can do as well, whichever one you have, um, trash, um, leaf, litter, mm -hmm. and what have you. Those things can be used to, um, to cover the soil. Once you cover the soil, you're going to, you're going to retain mm -hmm. moisture. Um, we also want to encourage people to use less water. You, you can use less water, but at the same time, use efficient, use efficiently. And then that brings technology in, into play, whether you're going to have um, things like testing the soil to see the soil moisture content, and then knowing when to water and how much to water. That, that goes a, a little more into, into the, the technological aspects. But of course, that is the direction in which we want to move our farmers. Sure. Or you can use drip irrigation, that kind of thing. Again, you use less water there. So those are some of the things. But we also have to encourage more water harvesting. In other words, we want farmers to store water as well when it rains. Um, maybe we need to encourage the hardware to bring in more, more, more of these tanks, these rubber tanks. Um, these maybe fiberglass tanks, so that once when water is available, especially from from the the heavens, that we can capture it and store it. There have also been some novel discussions. I mean, can't you dam the the gut sides, the the, the the dry rivers, so that when they're running, a lot of the water is held back. That is one of the discussions that is ongoing. And um, I believe is receiving consideration. As I said, when it comes to these kind of challenges, you, you have to be open-minded to, to all of the options. Again, it may be possible, I, I know the water department is contemplating um, drilling some new wells and that based on their results, it may be possible to apportion some of this water to the agricultural sector. We anticipate and we we anxious we we also optimistic so these are some of the things that are on the table for us to get water but we also have to remember once you get the water which is a precious commodity we have to be efficient with its use we have to find out ways in which um, it can be best utilized when to water how to water the right amount of water so that we can maximize and get the optimum results for the resources because we're one country that don't have we, we don't have the, the the luxuries of excesses of water so we really have to look carefully at that we at the department we want to be able to help in as much as we can we we, we want to encourage our farmers even cisterns i mean if we could just digress a little um cisterns they can be for home use they can be for agriculture and even in our construction well if you're out there in the farm you probably wouldn't have a cistern but those persons who are farming close to home and backyard gardens and so on, that is something that we need to consider. The system can be for your home use and it can be for your garden. And you know, all of this, store as much water as you can because going forward, we are unlikely to have a lot of wa water. And again, it's going to be uncertain. It's a new pattern, so we don't even know when it's going to rain. Look at, um, I'm very happy. Uh, Mr. Williams, that it, it has been raining this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we were preparing for Open Day, take us back a little to Open Day. I we one of the things that we know has people has talked a lot about. Oh my! Sometimes it gets so dusty, and we wondered what can we do? Do we bring in a water truck? We can cover the whole yard, and then the good Lord has been so gracious to us, and we had some very heavy showers, and so um, we didn't expect it, but it, here it is. And so, you know, it's going to be more tolerable. Water, though, we, we don't know when it's going to happen. So uncertainty, but we need to prepare as best as we can. Sure. Now, what is your department doing to help farmers who are most in need? I think um, we continue to be very sensitive to um, all of our farmers. And I'll tell you, um, a lot of farmers are generally all very ordinary people. Um, we have not so far been able to attract the large investors, the, those persons who are able to, to bring large sums and a lot of capital to the, to the industry and the enterprise. And so we, we're quite accustomed to dealing with the ordinary man. And, um, you know, I think government has been very sensitive to that. 
And in fact, um, the, the new minister, Minister Hamilton, Minister Eugene Hamilton, um, as soon as he got into office, I think one of the very first things that he did shows his understanding and his sensitivity to issues like these. Um, first, we began with some town hall meetings to hear from the farmers. And in those meetings, one of the constant cry relate to prices. I mean, government generally don't go out for large profits. The idea is to break even. The idea is to give you a modest surplus just to keep the thing going. Mm. But even so, as farmers were saying, listen, some of these prices, we find them difficult. Um, I wish that something can be done. And immediately, um, the, the, the minister responded and slashed prices on just about all of the major items, all of the things which are used on a very mm -hmm. regular basis. So that even um, if, if I could mention a few things, fertilizer, um, we were selling a fertilizer, a hundred pound bag, was going at like $175. And we, 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 right away we took off $100 and so that the selling price would now be $75. You know, um, and I think farmers welcome that. Um, you know, you could see an increase in, in the sale and the use of the fertilizers. Um, pig feed, feed generally, but the pig farmers are very vocal because um, going back to the theme, global realities, and we spoke about um, free trade. Mm -hmm. Free trade has affected the pig farmers significantly because, um, you know, there's no easier access to imported pork and it sells cheaper than how we can produce the local pork here. Mm -hmm. And so farmers struggling, struggling to compete, price, price competitiveness. And one of the things they identified that would help them to be able to lower the cost and to be a little more competitive was if we could acquire feed at a lower cost. And immediately again, feed moved from $45 per bag to $35 per bag. And then we got a new problem. But I, I prefer that kind of problem in that now we have, even to today, we have difficulty in, in, in meeting the farmer's demands. Because now, I suppose in the past, they used to use all kind of supplemental feed. Maybe they had to go look pig vines, you know, sweet potato vines and potato and so on to feed them. But now they can assuredly buy the pig feed. Proper so, feed. Proper feed. So that they come, they buy the, 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 the buy the feed, as old people say, in the numbers. And try as hard as we may. We have tried many different combinations. We have moved from bringing in one 20-foot container of feed. Now we bring in two 20-foot container of feed at a time. But we still haven't been able to supply the market. It's a problem that I prefer. Um, you know, we, ideally we, we would like that we, we, we could meet the demand. And we, go, we believe that we'll be able to eventually get the combination right and meet the demand. But I am still excited that, that farmers are, are so, the buying is so good that, you know, they're coming and that they're moving it. And the same thing with um, the, the, the broiler industry now is growing. Long ago, we didn't have meat birds, you know, but now a lot of people are going into it. And it's something that, that is emerging. And again, we're happy for that because we're pushing local. <clears throat> and I want to assure our, our, our buying public that each day, each, each time we bring in a container and, um, you know, we, we don't always meet your demand. We go back to the drawing board. We work on it because we want to be able to satisfy you. And so th this is one of the areas where you can reduce, reduce prices on inputs. Generally, reduce price on input seeds as well. As, as some of the items I just yes. mentioned, and um, technical services, and um, advice, and um, that kind of thing. We, we reach out to our farmers so as we could assist them and try to make their burden less. Now, while we're on the topic of how we can help our local farmers and what your department is doing mm -hmm. um, with that venture, <laughs> Let us look at local produce. I know that your department has tried for many years to promote um, local produce and eat local. Are you having problems in terms of marketing in the in, in, I mean locally? 
I would marketing like, the produce. I would like to see a lot more support for our produce. Marketing, I think, is an issue. I, I would say that marketing is a major issue for me and my farmers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I look at it from several point of views. Um, <coughs> The, 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 the markets, the markets would be um, ho large hotels, supermarkets, the general public. Those are the persons who would consume what, what is produced. And I believe that um, our local persons, beginning first with, with, with the general population, we need that kind of sense, that understanding that Yes, local have some major advantages over imported stuff. Um, I, I think the information has been out there time and time again. We are low chemical users. We, we are very close to natural. Uh, people know that. They, they will tell you that. But still, we don't always buy local. Um, unfortunately, we talk a lot about the prices or local sometimes costs more. We do admit, and it's not just because um, we want to charge more because it's better. People charge more sometimes because the, the inputs that you have to use, the seeds and so on, they're not from us. You have to purchase them. And, and so in order to break even, the, it has to be reflected in, in the cost of the produce. And I believe sellers, agricultural sellers, do their best to try and keep prices down as low as possible. But there are a lot of circumstances which are for now beyond our control. We spoke about prayer last night. We spoke about the uncertainties of, of the weathers and so on. And believe me, these things eventually factor in to your price, you know? So um, that is the, some of the reasons about the prices. But we really would like persons to first and foremost support local because this stuff a lot more healthy. Um, it's better for the national budget in that um, the government will have to spend less on curative aspects. Um, there, there'll be less um, things like the, the, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the, the, the heart-related mm -hmm. problems, which we get from a lot of the fast foods, a lot of the, the processed foods, which are imported, right? And it, it's better for local. We, we have to understand the power of advertisement. And that is one of the things that when, a lot of times when we discuss issues, we don't speak about advertisement. But in truth and in fact, we, we're heavily influenced by what we see on television. And we, we, we purchase these things, and they are not the better for us. So um, that, you know, we don't have the same power in marketing um, as, as to compete with some of these advertisements. And so therefore, the, the better ad may win but it's not the more nutritious, it's not, it's not the more superior product, you know? But um, marketing is really one of the things that, that we would like to see improve. And I begin first by encouraging our individuals. If you, if you seek after local, that is 80%, 90% of solving the problem. Because for example, it means to me therefore that the, the institutions, the hotels for example, if people are asking for local, then the hotel would understand that their first choice must be local. Then, then the supermarkets will understand that it doesn't matter how much you import, it doesn't matter how much you bring in. If the demand is for local, then local is what is going to move. It's the normal um, laws of economics. It's what is demanded is what would be sold. So I'm asking, I'm appealing first and foremost to, to the general population, let's cultivate, let's develop that taste for our own. When you buy local, you're supporting your own cousins, you're supporting your own relatives, you're supporting your own country. Mm -hmm. You're ensuring mm -hmm. that we are less <clears throat> dependent, that in truth we're moving away from just simply being politically independent. No, we're moving closer to being self-sufficient in foods, we're moving to a state where we can have nutritious foods, we're moving to a situation where we can feed ourselves and maybe even consider exporting to others. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this is the way it goes. Marketing is so critical, it is so important, and the power lies within the people. If the people get it right, so much more things could be right. Sure. Now, Mr. James, you have to go to the phone lines. Oh, sh okay, and certainly. And we have to hear from the people. This program is about that. And I hope 
that we have some farmers who are listening and who can call in.